Hey guys, welcome back to the HVAC Standard. I'm glad you joined me today. I got a couple things I want to talk to you about, but first I want to say thank you to all the current and future subscribers out there. All the likes, the shares, the comments, the interactions I get to have with people, I think it's awesome and I love every minute of it. So I want to say thank you. Uh, so if you would, if I could ask a favor that you don't owe me, if at the end of this video you liked it, give it a big thumbs up and share it with your friends because sharing is just the right thing to do. So today I want to talk about heat pumps. I want to try to clear up some of the misunderstandings and misconceptions of heat pumps because there's a lot of it out there. You know, I talk to so many different people and I watch a lot of videos. I do a lot of reading on the topic. And, you know, these days, whenever somebody says the word heat pump, this is what they think of. Now, for me, when I hear the word heat pump, this is what I think of what are the differences? Well, there, there's quite a few. And actually, the, the truth of the matter is heat pumps in general have been around for a long time. This isn't new technology. Um, they are advancing it. They are making it different. And they are making it more mainstream these days and have been for quite a few years now. Um, you know, I talk to people all the time and they say, oh, yeah, back in the 70s or the early 80s, these heat pumps came around and I put one in my house and it was junk. Well, sorry to hear that. But for one, Heat pumps were, long, were around long before the 80s. Two, well, you might have just been something wrong with it. Um, or three, they have been still working some of the kinks out, or they had been. Most of them have been worked out now, and heat pumps are actually a great thing. But the biggest thing is to understand is how many different types of heat pumps out there. You know, the word heat pump does not just cover one basic thing. Now, the idea of how it works, yes, the heat pump term does kind of encompass all of that, but there's a lot of different styles of heat pumps. Um, I'm a big fan of geothermal heat pumps. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that they are the heat pump technology, but yeah, that's what a geothermal is. Everybody just calls it a geothermal and cuts the heat pump off the end of it, uh, but that is a water source heat pump. Um, and then we have our traditional heat pumps, which would be like an air source heat pump, um, because again, that's what I think of when I hear the word heat pump. And then there's mini splits. So mini splits, um, are pretty mainstream these days. Um, they've actually been around forever. Everybody always talks about this new technology and this new stuff that's out there. And, you know, mini splits or duckless splits, whatever you want to call them, um, you know, they're not new. Um, actually, they've been around for a long time. Daikin actually invented the first one back in the mid to early 60s, I think it was. Um, and they've been using them in Europe and, and Asia for a long time. Um, and they have improve them and change them to be able to do different things and but they are heat pumps now you know i've got a couple of videos out there as far as how heat pumps actually work so we're not going to get into that today but a heat pump is able to do both your heating and your cooling from the same unit now you usually typically you have an outside unit which is your condenser on an air source heat pump and then you have an indoor unit that has to be your air handling unit it could be matched with a gas furnace could be electric air handler whatever and then the geothermal units it's all one unit now the ductless mini splits was one of the biggest things i wanted to talk about today because everybody thinks that that is the only style of heat pump out there now don't get me wrong ductless mini splits have great benefit in a lot of different applications but they're not a cure-all for every application um, you know me personally i'm more of a traditionalist i prefer an air source heat pump i prefer ductwork um, mini splits, they do have their, their benefits. Like I said, you know, I think they work great if you're dealing with, uh, classrooms in a school, if you're dealing with office buildings, uh, where it's hard to get ductwork through or, uh, one rooms like, um, sunrooms, you know, around here, we have a lot of sunrooms get added on. Um, you need some way to heat and cool that. I don't like the idea of taking that heating and cooling from the main part of the house. So yeah, put a mini split in there and there you go. Um, it's all taken care of, but that's a one head unit. Uh, second, second stories, we do a lot of those around here uh, where maybe you've got a couple bedrooms up there or something like that. Um, and it's hard to get ductwork up there without doing a lot of construction or demolition. And mini splits, ductless mini splits work great for that application. So I think they do have their place. Now, the other side of me is because I talk to so many people and they're like, oh yeah, I'm doing my whole house in, in ductless mini splits. Well, that is an option. Um, and you talk to a lot of people that do it. And actually, I've worked on a lot of systems that that's what they use. Now, those people that have that in their home and that's their only source of heat and their only source of cooling, um, they understand what the drawbacks are. If they understood them before they put the system in or not, maybe, maybe not. Depends on what everybody told them. Um, because the one thing about ductless mini splits is they are so mainstream as far as in the DIY arena 
um, you know, they were selling these packages out there and saying anybody can put them in, which is true. If you know how to either make a flare and tighten those flares down, or some of them even come with pre-charged line sets, um, if you're able to uh, put those connections together, run a little bit of a power wire, mount the units, all that kind of stuff, then poof, all of a sudden you have air conditioning. Yeah, it's big in the DIY market. Um, now, personally, I think everything should be installed by a, a, a contractor. I've seen a lot of um, problems with DIY HVAC, um, and there, there, there's a lot of issue there. And sometimes it works out, and sometimes it costs you three times the amount of what it would have been if you would have had a contractor to do it. That's just my experiences. So I don't want to, I'm not trying to get after anybody about doing it yourself or um, all these different uh, DIY um, YouTubers out there and things like that, you know, do your thing. That, that's not, that's not what I'm trying to go against, but I just know from my experiences, I do think it should be done by a contractor, but that's just me. Um, a lot of times you get better warranties, you get different, um, uh, quality, uh, as far as the equipment and all that kind of stuff. So either way, that's, that's regardless, but you know, the people that have these units that they're doing their entire house with, like I said, they know what the drawbacks are. And because there are drawbacks and nobody ever talks about those, you know, with a ductless mini split, majority of them don't have a backup source of heat. Now I get it. All these people are going to jump up and yell at me and say, heat pumps can produce BTUs down to negative 26 degrees. Yeah, I know what all the numbers are. I, I got that. Um, I, I've been around heat pumps for a little while. I understand that they still produce BTUs. Uh, the bad thing is, you know, people try to, um, say, well, it still produces heat down, you know, below zero, so it'll heat my house just fine. Now, that's not the true story. It will still produce BTUs down to negative 26, 28 degrees, but that doesn't mean it's enough BTUs to heat your house. Um, you know, in our area, or where I'm at, you know, it gets cold enough in the winters, especially some winters uh, when it, it was extremely cold, you know, we have temperatures below zero for extended periods of time. At that point, that unit will still produce heat, but nobody ever tells anybody that the ductless mini splits um, to try to compensate for the temperatures outside. Well, yes, it's still producing BTUs. Everything slows down. You know, the, it has to slow the the fan down outside. That way, it can keep more uh, heat in the or uh, uh, the fans inside slow down, so you can keep more heat in that coil inside, um, and it, it slows down, so it's not pulling as much cold air across that coil outside. So while we are still producing BTUs, it is not producing as many BTUs as what's needed to heat your house. So at that point, the way I see it, why wouldn't you just use a conventional heat pump system? Because at that point, the backup is built into that unit because in reality, I don't care what anybody tells you, heat pumps need a backup source of heat if you are in conditions that get down cold enough. Now, there's all kinds of people that are going to jump up and down and scream and yell at me. I'm going to get so much hate mail on from this video just because I'm talking about heat pumps. And I'm not trying to talk bad about anything, any type of heat pump in particular. But, you know, if you live way down south and, you know, you don't have really cold winters, yeah, no, your heat pumps don't need backup source. The rest of the country, and actually a good majority of the world, you need a backup source of heat. Uh, because it gets cold enough to where that heat pump, yes, it will still produce BTUs. It does not produce enough to heat the home, uh, not to where you want it. I mean, me personally, um, you know, if I set my thermostat at 70 degrees, I want it to stay 70 degrees. I don't want a system um, that I set it for 70 and it's like, well, it's only 64 in the house, but it's cool. It's modern technology. Everything's great. No, I want 70 degrees. If I set it at 70, it better be 70. And to me, um, you know, I know for a fact that a conventional heat pump will do that because, yes, they do have backup heat in them. Uh, if you're an all-electric system, you've got electric elements in there. If you are on a, a dual fuel, uh, you know, the fossil fuel kicks in, whatever kind of gas you have or whatever it may be. Um, and same with the geothermal. You know, geothermals have, usually have electric uh, backup elements in them. If you have a self-contained uh, full-size geo or if you have a geo split, uh, you can put it with electric air handler or you can put it with a gas furnace and again, have a dual fuel system. Um, now, mini splits, ductless mini splits, uh, there, are, there are one or two brands that I'm aware of off the top of my head that you can install a backup heater in, uh, backup element, um, but it's only a five kilowatt heater. Uh, if you're doing your whole home with it, um, you know, if you have multiple head units, yes, you may be able to get by. So, and, and there are plenty of occasions where it does get by, but you cannot get enough backup in there to be able to, for me to be able to guarantee 
that yes, you will be exactly what temperature you want to want it to be at any given time. So, you know, at that point, if you can figure that out, hey, mini mini splits are great um, to an extent. So that's one of the drawbacks that I see from it is the idea of not being able to keep up in extreme weather. Now, um, you know, there's a couple other things that I see with it as far as, you know, I have um, primarily always been in the service world in HVAC. And, um, you know, I look at a lot of the repairs that have to be done. And, you know, the mini splits, the ductless units have really improved their warranties. So I, that's a good thing. Um, the bad thing is if it's out of warranty, you know, they consider them disposable. I mean, if you talk to the manufacturers, like if you call a tech support and the unit's like five years old and, or let's say six years old and it had a five year warranty and they're like, well, yeah, this is probably wrong with it. I would, it's probably just time for a new one. You know what? If you come to my house and tell me, okay, I just spent $15,000 on this system to completely ductless, uh, mini split my entire house and you're telling me I need a new one in six years I'm gonna tell you get the hell out. I mean, that's just me. I mean, I don't mean to be that way, but um, I'm not doing that um, So, you know, they, they have extended a lot of their warranties um, a lot of them out there now are doing uh, there was one doing five or seven years uh, There's one out there now that does 12. Um, I think that's awesome as long as you have it in your head that you understand that in 12 years It's probably gonna be time to throw it away if something does go wrong now, maybe something won't go wrong. You, know, you won't need the warranty. You won't need the repairs at all. That's perfectly understandable to think that. Um, I'm not saying it will. I'm not saying that it won't because I don't know. I can't predict that kind of thing. Um, but the idea of them being disposable, that really turns me off on the idea of mini splits. Um, because when you are out of warranty and a repair comes along, they are very expensive repairs. There's no way to sugarcoat that. I was going to try to be as nice as possible about mini splits in this video, um, but that you know that's one of the things that I I don't have any way to sugarcoat that. If you have repairs on a ductless mini split, it is expensive, no matter what. So you know, th those are a couple of things that I look at when we're talking about heat pumps, um, because I want everybody to understand that there are different types of heat pump. You know, not every heat pump is a ductless mini split heat pump, but at the same time. I know that not every heat pump is a conventional heat pump system, and there's also a lot of geothermal heat pumps out there. There's all kinds, really, um, but these are the three main arenas that uh, you know residential HVAC sees, and I just wish that everybody would explain that to people better um, in, up front. That way, people understand what they're what they're getting and what they're getting into, and really, the biggest thing is what you're spending your money on, um, because this is your hard-earned money that's going into this. I think you should know what you're buying. So if you have any questions or anything, just hit me up in the comments. I love talking to people about this kind of thing. Um, I hope I didn't step on too many toes. I know I'm going to get a little bit of hit hate mail, uh, which I get good entertainment out of that too. Um, if I get enough hate mail, usually I do a video about the hate mail um, and we try to uh, you know fight back a little bit because one thing about it, if you do send me hate mail, I usually don't give up easily. Um, so you know, make sure you know what you're talking about when you, whenever you do it. Um, so I, you know, like I said, if you have anything at all, just let me know. Otherwise be sure to share, like, and subscribe just as always, you know, we always ask for that kind of thing. Um, so just let me know what you think. Thank you and God bless.